We're here at the Wyndham Hotel, 41st Street and 169 for this year's Trek Expo 2012. This promises to be an exciting convention and there's no telling who we'll meet. Such as Richard Hatch, Captain Apollo himself from Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> Welcome Richard. Well thank you very much, great to be here. You, you enjoying Oklahoma so far? <laughs> I haven't seen much of Oklahoma. I was in the car, the airport, and the hotel. So yeah. that's great. That's and of great. Of course, I went to uh, what's the name of that little restaurant next door here? Um, something anyway. I had dinner there last night. So well, good, yeah. excellent. That's excellent. Well, Richard, it's been 34 years since Battlestar Galactica first appeared on our television sets. My God, you've been counting. I've been counting. Wow. Yes. Okay. And today, it's still in the hearts and minds of fans all over the world. Yeah. And its popularity is due in no small part. To all of the hard work and effort that you've given to fandom throughout the years. This, uh, this is much more than a television show to you, isn't it? Well, science fiction, great science fiction, is about life. It's about the universe. It's about exploring theoretical probabilities and possibilities. It's about the drama of the human heart. It's written by some of the best, most intelligent, visionary human beings on the face of the planet. So, yeah, great science fiction. Not cheesy, you know science fiction, which is what most science fiction is these days, because it's usually uh, produced by people that don't understand science fiction. They think, you know, they want to somehow give the sci-fi audience something that they think the sci-fi audience will like, but most often it's just a sci-fi veneer, but it's not really written by great visionary science fiction people. So look, whatever people love is whatever people love, but I like really amazing science fiction that really goes to the core of the, uh, the human condition and explores again that mystery of the of space and where we are, where we came from, where we're going. And so Battlestar was, had a great, great story premise, you know, and, and this, the, the new show really went into the core story of life and death. The original show is more dancing around, you know, the journey to the stars, which was a lot of fun. Great, great, great cast. But the new story really went into the core epic journey of life and death, of surviving a holocaust, of dealing with your dark side, which is what every human being deals with when you go through a holocaust. And it was an extraordinarily well-written, well-acted drama. I'd have to agree with you. Yeah. Now, aside from your profession as an actor, <coughs> you've also written novels as well as comic book series, haven't you? Uh, novels, comic book series, I've written short stories, uh, scripts. Um, I produce, write, direct. Um, I love acting in something really wonderful, a wonderful story, and a wonderful juicy character. Um, just acting to act, you know, once upon a time, that was great, but for me, it has to be about something. Look, all entertainment has to be entertaining, but I hate to say it, great movies are about something, you know, and so anytime I, I get a really great story to be part of, uh, I'm thrilled. And, and I'm writing my own, uh, Magellan, there's this epic story about this uh, space mariner named Achillian who was thousands and thousands of years old who, who tri you know, uh, moves through a time topography of thousands of years and we get to see the history of a race and we get to see through his logs that he leaves the history of that civilization and get to understand what happened, why they disappeared, what is it within mankind that somehow keeps self-destructing? We tend to be a civilization that rise to peaks of achievement, and then we self-destruct. The Egyptians, the Mayans, the, the, you know, England, Rome. Uh, there are so many different, you know, civilizations that seem to reach a certain pinnacle and then they self-destruct. So the key is why? What is it with the human beings that somehow, some way, we just keep destroying ourselves? So the question is, are we going to continue to do that when we're playing with bigger toys? And more powerful toys so as they can end the human race so hopefully you know we learn some lessons and that Magellan really kind of goes into that core story of what is it that we forgot or need to learn or remember in order to get past this point that we're at in, in right now to get to the next evolution of humankind wow that's exciting now I know a few years ago before the revitalization of battle stars appeared on sci-fi channels and you've made guest appearances on this show right. you put together a trailer a preview presentation for execs in Hollywood to show the possibilities of reviving Galactica and this also included many guest stars from the classic show tell us about that project man you really got that whole voice thing down don't you my god you've been watching too many of these guys <laughs> <laughs> good job um, anyway uh, yeah, I, look, I, I love the, the, the premise of Battlestar Galactica, and I couldn't figure out why they're bringing everything back, including chips, you know. <clears throat> I mean, 
Battlestar has 65 million people watching it. So, you know, wh wh why are they not bringing Battlestar back? So I started pitching the, the networks and the studios and found out that they just didn't get it. They didn't remember Battlestar. Any show that was only on a year, they couldn't quite get, even though we were on the face cover of every major magazine in the country. There was a blitz, you know, a PR blitz, like nothing ever before. Um, and so I, I just started uh, basically developing various stories that I went to uh, talk to Rob Leefield about that, that basically uh, had a comic book company called Extreme Press. Um, and we ended up doing some comic book stories and then I, iBooks came to me to do some novels which I wanted to lay the foundation for a new series so I moved the story 25 years into the future and where my a new generation of our kids are born in space and are now the same ages as we were at the original show and then uh, I ultimately started thinking maybe I should put together a visual presentation of some kind which started out as an animated storyboard kind of grew into this second coming trailer doing, again, never having done this ever before in my life, but you know, when, where there's a will, there's a way. And I had a passion for the show, the story, for bringing it back, and uh, it kind of led me into producing, directing, writing, doing stuff I had not done that much of, um, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. So it really kind of opened up a lot of doors for me and, and has sent, since sent me on a, a journey of directing. I'm directing numerous projects, this wonderful 20s, uh, uh, period piece called White Wings. Um, I directed an infomercial for the securities industry. Never knew anything about it. I went and studied it, looked at case histories, wove together this, this infomercial to really uh, build a case for why most people who lose money in the stock market who are taken advantage of by brokerage firms uh, don't seek recourse. Uh, I learned everything imaginable about that. I mean, it's amazing how opportunities open the door to learn, to grow, to expand your field of range of, of understanding. So that's one of the reasons I love uh, art, I love music, I love uh, writing, I love history, I love physics, I love anything that it explores all those questions that I think any normal people would have about the world, the universe, who we are as human beings. Sure, exactly. Now also, you've got a reality TV series called Who the Frack? That's right. What exactly is this? I know, everyone goes, well, Who the Frack? And I said, Frack has become, come on, it's become a word that is used in households across the country. And of course, everybody knows what Frack means. And, and, and <laughs> it's always funny to me that parents kind of go, oh, how cute. My son just said, Frack you, Frack me, Frack this. And I'm kind of going, do you understand what your kid just said? Do you realize it's not the word? People get so upset about words, but they don't get upset about what the word means. There's certain words that people don't like to hear, but the word is used in a positive context. You know, like, it's so, you know, I won't use the word here, but you know, and then, but people get upset because of the word. It's what the word means. So frack can mean anything. But anyway, who the frack is like, who the, you know, what is, is, who's, is the real Richard Hatch? And the reason I have the hook on there is because Unfortunately, there's another Richard Hatch that went to prison, you know, uh, and was on uh, Survi not Sur yeah, Survivor, one of the first survivors, won a million dollars and didn't pay his taxes, all that stuff. And so uh, people were thinking that Richard Hatch was me, especially those people who had not watched me on, on shows that I was on. So uh, I wanted to clarify once and for all that, hey, I am the other Richard Hatch, or I should say I am the Richard Hatch. Battlestar Galactica, Streets of San Francisco, All My Children, Dead Man's Curve, a thousand other shows. Um, and I wanted to clarify that. And I wanted to use that as a hook to kind of bring people into uh, the journey of my life, which has been this business. This business has been the acid test of my soul. And everybody I know who has gone in this business to, to make it as an actor or a writer or a director or producer, it has challenged them beyond comprehension. And as you know, the vast majority don't make it, but it is a life-changing experience. Many people move on to other areas of life. Yes. Some people become presidents, um, you know, uh, Ronald Reagan, obviously. And so the question is, is that, you know, I wanted to let people know about the real story. We look at Entourage and you see the glamorous, glitzy story, but you don't see the real story of actors and artists struggling to make it, the ups and downs, the ins and outs, the agony and the ecstasy, and uh, which is, I think, far more entertaining and far more insightful uh, about the human condition because, you know, today people are losing their jobs and having to struggle because unlike what most politicians will tell you, no politician can bring back uh, jobs because the jobs that are required in this new economy 
require different skill sets. And most people, unfortunately, have been in these jobs 10, 15, 20 years. These jobs are going away. The skill sets are no longer required. So the government can't make you all of a sudden get these skill sets. But what they could do is make education more affordable so that more people can go back to school, get re-educated, and port their skills into the marketplace so they can move into the new economy and maybe become more successful than they've ever been before. But this is an economic perfect storm of change. and so. You know, I like to kind of explore and talk about all the ways that people can kind of uh, get empowered, you know, get educated, move beyond the boundaries of comfort, right. and go out there and really challenge yourself, which is what I did on Battlestar Galactica. I was an actor, and I got tired of being at the end of the food chain, waiting for the phone to ring. I started saying, you know something, life, you have to go out and create it. You don't wait for it. You go out and you create it. You collaborate with life, and then you get proactive, and I kind of kind of work with people all over the country in addition to my acting, writing, directing. I teach at universities, colleges, I speak to groups, all ages, because I want to empower people. I want to see more people bring their talents and abilities into the world, into the marketplace, because the world needs it. That's fantastic. That's a lot to say in, in two minutes, but there you are. <laughs> so say we all. <laughs> that is fantastic. That's exactly what I think we wanted to hear, Richard. And we're, like I said, we are uh, like I said, we really appreciate you spending time with us Thanks. and hope you enjoy the rest of your stay here in Oklahoma. I will. And if you'd like to welcome oh, people... Oklahoma! Da, 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 <laughs> That's da, da, right. Da, da, da. So if you'd like to welcome Oklahoma. people to Trek Expo, what would you like to say to our audience out here? Well, all I can tell you is, is that some people who have never been to an expo don't seem to understand that expos are for the whole family. There's something for everybody to do. There's games, there's toys, there's workshops, there's panels, there's, you know, just about everything. Dealing with gaming, dealing with writing, dealing with costuming, uh, dealing with a million things that you know, the whole family can find interesting. It's the one place where the whole family can go and actually enjoy the day together and you don't have to separate. You can actually do a lot of things together. So uh, I, I love coming to conventions. Plus, you find some of the smartest, most creative people in the world uh, at conventions. So it's a great place to hang out. It's a great place to have fun. Great place to meet the love of your life. And a uh, great place to, uh, to meet, you know, somebody that you can have one of those amazing conversations, you know, about uh, anything that you, any topic, the space program, uh, scientific breakthroughs, uh, new technologies, where the marketplace is going. You have very, you see, in, very intelligent conversations going on at sci-fi conventions. Yeah. Well, thank you very this much, is the Thank you very much.